So I'm really pleased that I've been accepted onto the beta program for the brand new Spotify Fan Insights dashboard. Now this is for those of you who are artists and you wanna basically see what's going on with your streams. Clearly, you know, streaming is becoming more and more important. So the ability to analyze the performance of your music, get some insight into what's happening with the audience is really valuable. And certainly if you're looking after your own marketing and promoting yourselves online. So this is what you get when you log in, okay? And remember, it is a beta at the moment. The other thing is that it's not open to everybody. I'm very lucky that I've been accepted onto this. So there is a form for you to fill out. I'll put a link down below um, in terms of if you wanna actually apply, okay? So I'm gonna take a look at the artists I've been allocated. Now, obviously I have the ownership of the name Danny J. Lewis and also Enzyme Black. You get a summary here of the artists and you get some real kind of quick facts here, just a little summarization of what's been going on recently. So you can see with the Danny J. Lewis artist, the monthly listeners is 4.6 thousand and daily listens is 248. Now my fan count is 605. I'll tell you about the definition of that fairly soon. So, you know, these aren't significant numbers. You know, for underground artists, um, we don't see a lot of streams. Obviously with major artists, you see a lot higher. If you go to the Spotify application and go to, there is a section on there um, about the artists. You're gonna see some insights in terms of the number of streams that they're doing. So let's go and take a look. I'm gonna click on this and this is the first thing that we see. So we've got 4.6K monthly listeners. This is what we saw at that high level before. Now we've got the ability to roll the mouse over the graph and just take a look at the trend and try to identify where there could have been certain spikes. You know, looking here, April the 30th to May the 28th, there could have been a reason why that happened. So just taking a look and seeing what's going on uh, as the months progress over here, it's really interesting to see what's happening. Now, the one thing that I love about this particular graph is the fact that I can compare to another artist. And this doesn't have to be another artist in my collection. So this isn't just limited to Enzyme Black. I'm gonna put in here a comparison with someone else and I'm gonna do Jeremy Sylvester. Big shout out to Jeremy. Um, He's a producer that I would class in a similar world to me, okay? So it's always good to get a benchmark, a reference point, you know, compare yourself with someone similar. And you can see here that the streaming behavior, um, at the beginning, you know, Jeremy had a higher amount of streams. In fact, his have been more kind of consistent without any spikes. And then taking a look at the very end, we get the reference point. We don't see the values for your comparative artist on the graph, but you do see a value at the very end. So you can form a kind of reference point in your mind. All right. So that's really useful. Let me just put someone else on Grant Nelson. Um, big shout out to you Grant as well. And we can take a look and see what's going on here. Now, actually that surprises me because I would class Grant Nelson as a bigger name, but what it means is maybe that he doesn't have that much content basically on Spotify. And you'll find a lot of the underground artists are not really diving into Spotify. Um, I think we're about to kind of hit a period of change where the underground world will start to embrace it um, and you know use it in partnership with the physical world and also the downloads. I think the whole thing can run in harmony. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how that pans out. Um, so anyway, look, that's the ability. So you can get in there and you can compare. So it's a fantastic tool. Always benchmark against someone sensible, okay? So, but I could search here, I mean, look at this. Um, Let's do the David Bowie. And um, of course, you know, rest in peace, um, you know, because of the fact that he's died, a whole lot of people that are getting to know him musically. And you can see up here this reference point, you know, way in excess of what I've got. 8.19 million streams. Okay, that's amazing. So, you know, you can pick anybody. Um, all of this data is public. You'll find it on the Spotify player, as I mentioned before, in the about section. So a couple of things I'm gonna point out, you know, when you mouse over these question marks, what happens is, is it gives you an explanation about what you're seeing. So when it says 4.6K monthly listeners, it says here the unique users who have played the artist in the last 28 days. So they include casual as well as engaged users who have intentionally Listen to the artist. And that data is updated daily, okay? So let's scroll down, let's take a look. 
Now this is a really interesting little diagram here. We're, we're basically looking now at the fan engagement. So on the left hand side, we can see here the monthly listeners. Okay, so that's something we've already seen defined. But on the right hand side, what we've got is the fans. So these are basically, if we read the definition, so they're listeners who have intentionally played the artist repeatedly over the last six months and saved their music. So they're more likely to describe themselves as fans of the artist or attend a concert. So this is a great reference to get you understanding how many you know strong fans you have supporting your music on Spotify. So these are quite cool, these little kind of accolades, these uh, badges or awards. Um, so here on the left hand side, we have two loyalists. Um, so they're basically my ultra hardcore fans. So two people who have listened to my music more than any other artist. Big shout out to all two of you. Thank you so much. Um, and then also there's another one over here, the regular. So this is um, one person who listened to this art, listened to me. The majority of days in the last month that's amazing so thank you to uh, my one regular um so anyway look let's take a look at the the way that people listen on spotify this is a really interesting thing to take a look at now if you're using spotify you'll be aware that there are numerous places where you can actually play the music from across the player so that could be um, playlists it could be radio it could be your own collection that you're saving um, a mixture of different places, including artist profile pages. So you can see all that laid out here. This is very interesting, all right? So if we go to the monthly listeners, we can see what's going on here. So we've got these in a strong color and we've got the percentage over here. Now look what happens if I switch to fans and look how different things are. So when people are listening and they're discovering my music, you know, they're doing so through a whole variety of different places. You can see the majority of people are discovering my music from my actual artist profile page, which is quite interesting. But the fans themselves, they're listening to my music in their own saved collections. So, you know, they're saving the music into, um, you know, their own playlist or into their own collection. You can save albums, can't you, of course, or singles. And so that's actually there stored and they can come back to that time and time again. So in some respects, that means they're following my music, you know, so that's a really important one. So it's really good to measure how many people are into that. So that's a really healthy one. And you can see here that my fans are very rarely coming back to my profile page. Page. they're also not really finding my music in other people's playlists okay so this is an area of growth for me to target i could try to get my music in curators playlists there's lots of people putting playlists together and in fact playlists are very very important these days in some respects it's like getting your music on a radio playlist you know so it's really a case of hoping to get on the the most important playlists out there that's a real um goal so here are some demographics, okay? So we've got here um, information about the um, the gender and the age group of my listeners. So the monthly listeners here, you can see that it's um, majority male, 64% men, 35% women. And we can see the age breakdown here. So understandably, considering um, the music that I make, we've got 28 to 34 year olds um, in the majority here. And then also let's take a look at the fans. And uh, this is interesting. So these are the ones who are more dedicated. Um, a nice healthy amount of 18 to 22 year olds here. That's great. Um, interesting difference between the two. Okay, you can see here. So, so there are some variations. Now coming down here, this is interesting also. What's happening is, is that this is basically showing you who else was listened to in the last 28 days. Okay, and looking at that, that's almost like a kind of recommended list of other artists um, you know, similar artists. So that's quite interesting too. Let's take a look at the uh, kind of geolocation um, activity. So looking at where in the world my fan base is and uh, also, you know, the listeners. So we're on the monthly listeners button here. We can zoom in here and take a look. When you run your cursor over these different territories, you get the number of listeners here. So this is great. It's just a nice little kind of fun visual here. Looking at the fan composition as well, you can see the majority of those are in the UK. And we get more granular detail here if we scroll down. So I've got the top 50 cities. Um, London, understandably, um, for the monthly listeners, being the one that's dominating. Birmingham in second place. Big shout out to the second city. Um, I've got plenty of people I know up there. So thanks for your support. And, um, you know, this regional breakdown um, is very, very interesting. 
So um, that's what's going on on that screen. Okay, so that's the first screen we've got there. This is at the artist level. And um, we've also got the graph switchable between these different modes. So we could look at the daily listeners, run the mouse cursor over here. So yeah, more detail on the graph onto the fans. So it's just a, a kind of cumulative fan count. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, that's interesting. Um, a dip here. I wonder why that happened. Um, so, you know, you can take this and kind of correlate against, um, you know, your marketing activities, things you're doing on Facebook. Go and look at the Facebook Insights dashboard. Look at the posts that you were making. See if there's anything that kind of gives you a sense of reasons why things are happening as they are. So, that's the artist level stuff. Let's go down onto the song level. And um, this is where I'm gonna scroll down here. We've got, only got a couple because um, not every track is having enough of a play count to be included in this. All right, I've got a large catalog on Spotify, but none of them are really streaming any, any significant amount. And you can see here that the two most popular are Spend the Night, um, two variations of the same. In fact, the metadata is a difference here. So the naming of the mixes is different. The music is exactly the same. All right, so this is Spend the Nights, you know, the famous aged man uh, mix or dub. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it so we can take a look at the actual track. We can see at the top here, it's got the name of the track, and then we can take a look at the daily listeners for the track. We've got some summaries underneath, daily streams here. Okay, so switching between those on the graph. This is once again the audience. So, what are they doing um, with the track? Um, so I'd need to do some more deeper analysis on here. Literally, I've got access to the dashboard today. So I'm just kind of relaying some initial feelings. Um, once again, coming down here onto the map and the top 50 cities again. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Let's come to playlists because, um, you know, I mentioned that they're very, very important. We can take a look at, um, this is showing the top two of 600 playlists. And the reason why it's not showing all the other players is once again, because the stream count wasn't high enough. But we can see that the most important playlist here is this Garage Anthems one here. The author is Chris Raphael Christodoulou. So many thanks, Chris, uh, for including me on that. You know, this is where as an artist, potentially you could reach out to the authors of these playlists and you, know, you can maybe personally thank them. Um, I think we're entering into the, uh, the kind of like a brand new territory really. And um, I think, you know, it's interesting. People who get their music onto influential playlists are going to get themselves heard by a bigger audience. You know, I don't know if you guys are aware of that. You know, the rumor is, is that Lord, um, the artist, she was put on a, a playlist, a really influential playlist, Sean Parker, um, his kind of like new music playlist. And as a result, she got that burst of activity. And that's what led her on to becoming an international mainstream artist. So playlists very, very influential. And, um, You'll find tons of them all over Spotify. Playlists that Spotify have put together and curated. And um, also, you know, your friends socially. I've got some playlists. Um, I'll put up some links to those. Um, you can go and check those out. That's a great thing about Spotify. It's a very social listening experience. And ultimately, I think what it is for those of us who are music producers and creators, it's that ability to reach a wide audience. Um, it's incredibly powerful. So I think, yeah, personally, I'm behind the concept of streaming. Um, you know, I think it's something that will become, you know, very, very important in the future. Still, as I said, physical is important for some people. And also the downloads are still important as well. Certainly for DJs, if they want to play stuff on CDJs and things like that. I make club music, you know, so ultimately that's a destination. So what we're looking at here is, is of course, people are listening, um, you know, maybe at work. Um, maybe in a car, on the mobile phone, all that kind of stuff. But I've got to say, um, I have played with a couple of mobile apps that are DJing tools that use streams. So that's a very, very interesting new ground. All right. So um, I'm wondering if I've covered everything here. Um, let me just come back up. Was there something else that I've missed out? I think that's pretty much it. All right. Okay. So it's a really, really nice, simple, clean design. I think it's, it's not too deep. It's not going to be something that you're going to get buried in. Um, I think it gives just enough insight for people like you and I, if you're a music maker, um, just to start analyzing what's going on with your music. So try and get on. Like I said, the link is down below if you want to actually uh, apply to get in on the beta. Eventually, of course, I think it will become available for everybody. Um, you know, if you have any questions, of course, just put them down in the comments below. I can't answer everything because I'm so busy, but uh, you know, if I do get a chance to, 
I will do. Um, but yeah, give it a go. Um, and you know, seriously, if you're not getting into the world of analytics just yet, um, it might feel a bit techy and a bit geeky, but I think this is a lovely presentation of that world. And, uh, you know, it's a, a real nice way to kind of dip your toes into the world of data analytics and you know, really try to understand your audience and uh, how you could actually push your music out to people, reach out to them and uh, benefit from all of the different kind of platforms out there. <laughs>